Uh, YouTube has been acting kind of crazy with us lately, fam. I, I can't even hold you, fam. It's, it's, it's been a, uh, they've been acting like some Karens, as they say. <laughs> you know what they like, you know, when it's like a powerful monopoly like that and people rely on the platform, bro, you kind of got to play ball sometimes, right? <sighs> Listen, I try to tell my team this all the time, fam. Yo, it looks nice oh, you- where you are. What's that? So it looks nice where you're at, fam. Oh yeah, this is just downtown Vancouver, bro. I'm just on my uh, on my balcony right now, about to hit the pool with my whiz because it's hot. So mm-hmm. we got a little, you know, we got some nice pools by the beach over there, you know. And yo, summertime is Vancouver, man. You know, just stay here, you know. Go on vacation in the winter, bro. Yeah, and like I I went to Vancouver maybe back in 2005. And one thing that I found that's crazy, like when you're downtown, no matter how much buildings there is, there's always this huge mountain range on the horizon, fam. Yeah, you know what? It depends where you're looking, right? If you're looking north or east, you're going to see the mountains. But, you know, Vancouver, like the city itself, is it's like Manhattan, right? It's like a little island, Mm -hmm. like in the ocean. So half of it, no matter where you look, you're going to see ocean as well, you know? Yeah. And, you know, that's why the property values, though, bro, you want to be high up. Oh, my gosh. Well of a watch. <laughs> Yo, I'm, listen- I'm hearing that it's like almost or maybe higher than Toronto to get an apartment over there. Like, what's the average apartment price out there, fam? Well, I mean, you know what? It depends what kind of apartment. Like I said, where you are, where you are in the city. But like, like, like downtown, single- one bedroom. Shit. Well, you're looking anywhere from like I would say six fifty at the lowest to like two mil if it's a luxury, right? It's pretty much on par with Toronto, bro. I've seen the Toronto prices also astronomical. It's just if you buy in like a a detached home, now nah, that's when Vancouver gets a little bit out of hand, bro. Just mm. you know, now you need one and a half mil up, you know, really. So, People are moving like way out of town, bro. You know, like how Saga is out of town. Well, we got Langley out here. We got Chilliwack. We got different neighborhoods. You'd be like an hour or so out of town and everything. It gets affordable, right? But as for like actual Vancouver proper, bro. <laughs> You're saying gentrification got that place away right now. My G, yo, look, I hadn't been in Toronto. Like I was just saying the other day, but I, it had been about two years and the difference was noticeable. You know what I'm saying? With the amount of towers on, on Lakeshore, you know what I mean? Just sprung up like cigarettes. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Same thing. Same thing in Vancouver and Burnaby. Like, it's popping. Over here, our famous street is Hastings. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? In Vancouver proper. But Hastings is like a war zone, bro. Because, you know, we battling a, a narcotics crisis along with the whole homelessness issue. So what we have down there right now is a huge tent city mm-hmm. in the middle of Vancouver that stretches for blocks, bro. And I'm not talking like we used to have tent cities in the parking tank, but this is like on the freaking sidewalks for like a mile. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, there's, there's, there's social issues here, my G. <laughs> it looked beautiful. Like right here, this is where you want to be. But, you know, just a few blocks that away. Uh uh-uh. uh. As soon as you go down a few floors and walk down, it's like, whoa, watch that needle. Yeah, I man, like, you know, that's shit. That been Vancouver for a minute, bro. You know, you got to be savvy around the city. Same with Toronto, bro. You live, you know, if you live downtown, you know, there's things you're going to have to deal with. Facts. So listen, for the people who are not watching on YouTube, who don't see this legendary face that I got here on, on the screen, right? For our listening audience, because, you know, we be potting for real, for real. We got a, a listening audience with a crisp audio, right? So some people might recognize the voice, but for the people who don't recognize the voice and, and for y'all on YouTube, make sure to hit the subscribe, make sure to like, make sure to share all that good YouTube stuff. But I got a legend uh-huh. over here. All right. I, ha- I had the honor, like I was I was in the smoking section over at the OVO um, World Concert or World Tour Concert. And I was like, yeah. holy shit. No way. And my bad. <laughs> I fucked up the name before. You know what I'm saying? A little, smoking a little bit too much that night. But I was listening back to the music. And I was like, yo, I've listened to so many bangers from this guy. Back when the first album dropped, fam. 
I'm super honored to have this conversation with you. So for the people who Respect. for the people who are tuning in right now, we have the legend checkmate in the motherfucking building. I, I don't have my I don't have my sound effects out, but listen, there's bare air horns going off in my head right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> man, you hilarious, bro. I felt like you know what, man. I seen you. I was like, man, I don't know, man. I've been watching y'all. You know what I'm saying? I feel like we would vibe right away. Respect. Showing up. Showing up, and plus we was in the smoking area, so you know it's already all goody. <laughs> well, listen, fam, you're you're a Vancouver native, right? So I know that smoking is is a is inbreded in y'all culture. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You know it. You know it, man. You know. Mm-hmm. Best bud in the world. Now, listen, fam. I have my questions that I have here on my on my phone here, but just something yeah. off the head that just popped into my head when I was listening to some tunes. Especially uh, the, the the classic Northern Touch. Right. Are you still dealing with these? Are you still dealing with these villainous cats, son? <laughs> Always, my G. You know, <laughs> like that's the thing. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Like villainous cats of all kinds. You know what I'm saying. Like the other night, the other night, bro. I gotta be real with you, man. You know, when I look at that lineup and I look around, I'm like an underground kind of rapper, bro. You mm. know what I'm saying? Like. I got a lot of love from my peoples and the people who follow my music, but that was an event where people were just there to hear my verse from Northern Touch. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and that's a level of like, you know, there's like a dichotomy in my life where I'm the underground king checkmate. I get a lot of respect. I'm like a rapper's rapper. Mm-hmm. Rappers fucking love me, bro. I get, you know what I'm saying? I get flowers everywhere I go. Wherever I go, I, I get love. I can't lie. And I'm grateful for it. But then in that level right there where I was amongst those level of artists, you know, I'm a junior right there. I was really lucky to be on that set, bro. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that was like the Willy Wonka ticket. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, I am ha- hanging with them feeling this cats, but all kinds, bro, from Hastings to motherfucking live set in Toronto, bro. Mm. And even with you that, know. fam, they flew you out just for the one verse. Yeah, yeah, bro. That's Yo, wild. and and Clutch Hotel Two A thing, bro. Just like that is wild, bro. You know, and I gotta I gotta show mad like appreciation and thanks. I already said it on the gram to you know to Drizzy himself and and Charlie B and whoever was involved in those decisions, bro. I, I met some epic people that night who I never seen before, and I ran into some artists who I haven't seen in a lot of years, mm-hmm. and the vibe, bro, like. I've been a part of a lot of shows. It was like pure love, bro. It was a crazy, crazy thing, bro. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And, and, you know, off, off brand question, because there's like breaking news that is going on today, you know, and it's kind of circles around with that concert. You're, you're okay. Mm -hmm. right? You don't have any coughing, any like, uh, loss of taste or anything like that. You're good right (laughs) now. Right. (laughs) Well, yo, man, this is the thing, man. When a guy smokes weed all the time, you tend to cough a lot, right? <laughs> so, so, you know what I'm saying? Like, to tell you the truth, I might have had COVID eight times and didn't even know it, bro. You know what I'm saying? On on another level, though, I'm going to have to go outside real soon. So I got a COVID test. I heard about it, mm-hmm. about, you know, the thing. So I, I got a little test with me right now. So wish me luck. After this directly, I'm a, it's the test is on. Yeah, because... Drizzy, you know, the news broke that he had to cancel tonight, which is it's Monday night when we're filming this episode right here. And he due to him having the vid. Right. He was giving mega hugs on Thursday night. fam. I was like, hmm, I hope he didn't have it then. Bro, you know, hey, man, I'm, you know, they say, you know, you could be like a sleeper cell. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You could be out there hugging, you know, everybody. That, I hope it ain't true, man. I hope I don't have it. But, you know, hugs was being had, bro. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a lot of close contact was out there. Fam. I'm like, oh, you know, man. There was no masks. You know what I'm saying? There was sweating going on. There was yelling going on, bro. Mm-hmm. OK, OK. Yeah, man. I listen. Wish me luck. I wish you luck, fam. I hope you're after this. You know, hit me up in the DMs and let me know what the what the results are. If you if you're okay with that, fam, because that's wild. I, I'm gonna hit you up. I can't afford to be sick though, bro. I gotta get out here. Yeah, yeah. 
And when was the last time you were in Toronto? Like, like, frick. Like, I feel like in Vancouver, it's, it's not just people just popping over here, fam. Y'all are all the way on the other side of the country. Oh, sorry, what was the question, though? When was the last time you were in Toronto? Be, you know, besides oh, last, oh, yeah. last Thursday. Yeah, it was like two years ago. Uh, there was a CBC, also like the Northern Touch mm. CBC show, like on uh, Echo Beach. It was it was a lit venue too. Uh, I like not like this, but it was a it was a big thing. It was nice once again. CBC showing love. I tell you, man, being part of this Northern Touch thing, bro, you get a hell of a lot of free things and flights and things. Too. So yeah, that, two years ago, I would say. Yeah, that was a twenty year anniversary, no. Yeah, and it was just before the whole pandemic thing popped off. So, you know what I mean? I guess the timing was correct. Yeah, so even with that being said, how the last two years been for you? Because you're over there in the West Coast. I know they're a little bit more open than us, have, you know, than we have been over the last two years. So, like, what's the yeah. experience been for you over the last two years? Like, were you, like, down, like, just chilling? Were you moving around? Like, were you reflecting? Like, what was going on for you? I got to be real, the way my life works, bro, I was relatively unaffected. Mm. You know what I'm saying by it? Because I've seen people had to just like really, literally did not work for two years. And, you know, all the ramifications that come with that, you know, uh, for sure. and I feel for people. But, you know, the, the way I move, bro, you know, you know, my Instagram handler handle is, is Checkmate the Hustler, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I move different. March to the own beat of my drum. I don't want to say too much about it, but I was relatively unaffected by it, bro. My work stayed. So uh, I made a lot of a lot more music because there was a lot less static. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. as an artist, you got to block a lot of stuff out. Well, that was a really quiet time. So, uh, yeah, a lot of music was made. I want to shout out my man, Concise the Black Knight. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, we put it in, man. And a lot of music is coming out. The song just came out on Thursday, Untied Laces. Um, our next song will come out soon. I just uploaded it. Uh, and we put out a lot of music and there's a lot more to come. Okay. So let's, let's do a little bit of a history lesson, right? Because to be honest, I'm looking through the internet trying to find interviews. I try to do as much research as possible. But you do right. not have a lot of interviews on, on YouTube, fam. It's, it's like digging for a needle in a haystack. Can we go to that first yeah. before I get into the history stuff? Like, why do you, are you like not really big on doing interviews? Yeah, I'm not, bro. Um, you know, I got to be real with you, man. Uh, I've never really been comfortable with the industry. Mm -hmm. um, I, find that, I find that there's a lot of ulterior motives, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of fickle behavior. And it kind of turned me off. I'm not the only artist, bro. There's been many, many artists who just haven't vibe with the way people act and what, what goes on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I am, uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm not out there looking for it, bro. I'm out there trying to make music. If you want to talk about the music, I'm ready to do that. A lot of people don't want to talk about the music. They want to talk about other things. And that kind of turned me off. And that's the reason why you can't find a lot of things about Checkmate, bro. Yeah, a lot of people are just trying to get viral moments a lot of time. I mean, you want to know about me? I put out music consecutively. There's been three albums, full albums in the last two years. I know. Last three years. You know what I'm saying? Plus numerous singles. And I talk about myself and my life a lot. And that's another thing. If you're going to interview me or talk to me about me, maybe you should listen to my music. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm here for. You know what I'm saying? Not the fucking Ray Ray. Pardon my French. Yeah. No, you know, when it comes to interviews, I, I don't know about like other people, but I really feel that it's important to listen to people's lyrics and stuff like that. Right. Because that's where you get the real, the real gold. You know what I'm saying? Interviews are cool because you get to find out what questions you don't want to repeat. But the real jewels about people's life are in the music. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know what, bro? This is the thing about, about art. You know, for a lot of artists, it's the only time they get to be brutally honest and say the things they really feel. You know, it's art. You're allowed to vent. You could say craziness, actually, but it's, you know, it's under the banner of art. You know what I'm mm. saying? Uh, I get to be 100% honest and say the things I want to say in my music. 
If you see me in an interview, a lot of times I'm answering questions that I've already answered a thousand times, you know what I'm saying, that aren't really relevant in what's going on with me right now. And, like, honestly, it's kind of disrespectful to me if you want to get shine off, like, interviewing me or whatever it is, but you're not listening to my art when that's what I'm here for. I'm not here to be some sort of, like, clown, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I make music. That's it, bro. Like, listen to it. If you don't like it, don't fucking listen to it. That's it. Yeah, yeah, straight. So, like, to go back a bit, right? Now, I'm, I'm, I've am i always tried to find, like, where you're from, right? And the only thing I can really identify is, like, Africa that I hear from the lyrics. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. what country in Africa, and were you born there or born in Vancouver? <laughs> so, I'm from Zimbabwe. Okay. And I was born there. Yes. Okay. I was born there. And and I didn't come to Vancouver until I was 16. Wow. Yes. So you got to grow up and be a full teenager in Zimbabwe. Yeah, until I was 15, just before I turned 16. I lived my whole entire like like life there up until that point. Mm -hmm. You know, and in Southern Africa. I have family in, in Cape Town, so South Africa's part of the mix and Botswana, you know, but that's where I'm from. And I lived a full life there and I went to school there. And uh, yeah, yeah, bro. Um, I'm an immigrant, not like came here as a baby, not at all, bro. Mm -hmm. I remember flying here. I remember being at Heathrow Airport waiting eight hours in transit by myself, you know? Mm -hmm. So yes, this immigrant thing is not lost on me. And and that's that's one for the records right there. No, that even like makes a lot more sense in the things that I've heard from the lyrics that I listened to back in the days to the things I hear now. You know what I'm saying? You guys always talk about heritage and a lot of different things that sometimes I feel go over people's heads. Right. So that makes sense. Yeah, bro. You know what? I always been that guy, bro. Like a lot of the things I say go over people's heads. You know what I'm saying? Uh, for a minute there, me and my boy Sice, we was thinking of dumbing it down. And we, we actually did attempt it, you know, uh, you know, you know, to me be like more palatable to the masses. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, that's not really us. As an artist, you got to do what you do. And uh, yeah, man, uh, we're complex, bro. We always have been. We always strive for higher level bars. You know what I'm saying? And we've never been on. A, we want to be this on a Canadian level. Like, we strive to be lyrical on a world-class level. Mm -hmm. Like, we always will. I'll never stop doing it. I won't apologize for it. If it goes over your head, maybe listen to it a couple times. It is what it is. No, but even, like, stuff like this, like, getting some more context, I feel is, is super important because, like, that's a jewel right there. Like, even with that experience, right, you growing up all the way to 16, what was the first, like, when you got to, to Canada, what was that like? Did you have to do, like, um, like a translation? Like, did you learn, did you know English right away? Were you learning English over there? Because I know in African countries, they teach, like, four or five languages in school. Yeah, no, I, I grew up speaking English, bro. And mm -hmm. I went to, like, a, like a, a school run by Jesuit priests, like a Catholic school. Okay. Because if, if you wanted the bomb education, that's where you went, right? So I had a very, very good education, thanks to my parents. Nice. You know what I'm saying? And I got to study a lot of languages, including Latin, even. You nice. know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I'm saying, bro, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a high level of education, which I was blessed with. Um, and then to come here, you know what I'm saying? The, the fact of the matter is, if you grow up in Africa, anywhere in the world, Americana and America is like, is the culture of choice. It has affected everybody globally. You know what I'm saying? Even though I grew up in Africa, what do you think I watched on VHS tapes? Okay. Nothing but the Cosby show and NBA basketball, the finals over and over again, Magic Johnson, mm. whatever it was. My cousin was a DJ. He'd be in the clubs. I'd be sneaking in with him like all 12 years old with the crates and all that. Have a girl put an arm around me so they couldn't see me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And what were we playing? We, we were playing that. He was playing the hits, bro. He was playing all the American playlists, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He, even in England, bro, they were playing American joints. So it was nothing for me to really come over here and 
you know, it's not even America, it's Canada. So really, when I came here, I was super way ahead of the curve in terms of hip hop already. Mm-hmm. I remember going to high school, you know, what I'm saying with all white kicks in the fat laces, you know, what I'm saying. And the red Adidas sweatsuit and everything. Cats, like, cats was looking at me like I was like an alien, bro. You know? Yeah. Because Vancouver was full of Metallica shirts and jean jackets. And you know what I'm saying? It was, it was, it was different, you know? And then there was like three Trini cats in my school. Mm-hmm. I was like, hey, hey, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it was like you were already, you were ahead. Where like a lot of times when, when people come and immigrate to Canada or even any part of like North America, it's usually like you got to catch up to the style. You were ahead. Well, I was, I was way ahead of the game, bro. You know what I'm saying? Not to mention, you know, my fam in Chicago, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I had just been there, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it was just, yeah, I was way ahead of the game, you know? Like back then, bro, hip hop in Canada was like, I don't know, Michael Williams was still climbing over fences on Rap City, bro. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> You know, it was a weird vibe, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But it was it was good times, bro. You know, it's literally like I walked off the plane in Vancouver. I was a legend already, bro. Like I was a weird kid and everybody gravitated to me. This ain't nothing to me, bro. What I what I do every day and how I'm checkmate, I've been this a long time. Wow, that's that's super interesting, fam. And like with your with your parents, right? You 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 had both parents in the household. I, I've heard you mention your dad on different lyrics and stuff like that. Right. And how you really Hell big yeah. them up and stuff like that. So what what were they both? What what did they do? What was their their occupations? Just to get a little bit more personal. Yo, you know, my dad is a goldsmith. That's what his trade is. Nice. He's a jeweler. He's a jeweler. And you know what? I, I honestly, when I was a young teen, I, I did an apprenticeship underneath uh, him for a few years, mm-hmm. you know. So uh, I know a lot about jewelry and all this. Um, Thanks to my dad. Uh, but my dad, you know, Africa's a weird place. And, uh, you know, you got to be a lot of things. And uh, I've seen a lot of things from him mm-hmm. uh, that may, make me who I am today. Uh, like way more G shit than I ever seen. I seen from my dad, you know. So, so you know what I'm saying? Uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. No, for sure. And you mentioned going to Heathrow Airport by yourself. And, and, and making yeah. your way over to Canada. So what was the reason to even leave Zimbabwe in the first place? Uh, political turmoil, um, economic crisis. To tell you the truth, there was a talk of conscription into the army. And, the and sorry to 18. interrupt you. This is like back in the 80s, just to give people a timeline, right? This is 1989, bro. Okay. Like 1988 or 89. Like it all happened... So, uh, yeah, um, it was an issue about conscription into the army. And my dad had been in the army. If you're from that, from that part of Africa, you've probably done some military service and seen some war, you know, especially at those times. My dad was one of those guys, my uncles, there's uh, military paraphernalia and military action around us my whole life. There was a mm. civil war going on until Zimbabwe achieved independence in 1980. And then Robert Mugabe took over. And then there was a uh, tribal turmoil between the South and the North of the country. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's a, it's a, it's a complex situation. End result is my dad didn't really want me to go to the army. Uh, and my aunt lived in Vancouver and, uh, you know, he met, my dad made it happen. My mom made it happen. Uh, I ended up getting on a plane going to England and, uh, from England, uh, heading to uh, Vancouver. Nice. Nice. And you mentioned, listening um you said your brother was a dj my, my cousin your my cousin, cousin was a Mark. dj so back yeah. then and i'm just gonna i'm just gonna make an assumption you're hearing like run dmc slick rick um ll cool j like all them things you know children's story beastie boys license to ill mm-hmm. but i gotta be honest with you you know, as a youth, all those rap records, that wasn't as mainstream. I was just into rap. So I listened to those records more. If you went to the club, you were going to hear Lisa Lisa and the Cult Jam. You know what I'm saying? And you were going to. 
<laughs> head to toe, head to toe. You were going to hear Janet Jackson. It was a lot of R&B. You were going to hear Cameo, Word Up. You know mm. what I'm saying? It was it was the funk. It was the R&B days. You were going to hear Bobby Brown, Don't Be Cruel, mm-hmm. New Edition. It was that era, bro. LaVert, so on and so forth, right? So he was spinning all those records. You know, rap back then, they just slipped a little, you know, there's a little rap song in the mix, one or two. Yeah. But it wasn't that hard. But for me, I was addicted right away. I got the four albums and listened to them. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that, that was the vibes back then, bro. The club was lit back then, bro. Now, for me personally, I remember seeing LL Cool J jumping all around the room, jumping off the speaker, saying, forget Oreos, eat Cool J cookies, I'm bad. And I was like, all right, that's what I want to do. Who was it for you, <laughs> fam? Yeah, you know what, bro? It was the movie Beat Street. Mm. It was the movie Beat Street, bro. I watched that movie, bro. It, I think that was like 1986. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it was in Africa. Me and my cousin, we went to the theater. We watched that movie. We went back. We watched the movie again, bro. <laughs> and you know what I mean? And you, we was we was trying to do backspins and windmills on the goddamn carpet mm-hmm. and ruining my uncle's, uh, you know, re- uh, record player trying to scratch. We did it all, bro. <laughs> you know, you know how it was when you was a kid and you saw a Kung Fu movie and then everybody was trying to chop each other up outside yep. afterwards. It was exactly like that. So Beat Street, yeah, bro. And everything that came with that movie. And then after that, you know, you just want to soak it all up. You watch Crush Groove. And that's that scene where Cool J comes out with my radio. Mm-hmm. That's scintillating. That's the first time I ever seen Cool J. So, you know, hey, man, I've been lucky enough to be like down with this hip hop shit since it's birth, birth, bro. Me like, too. like my cousins was DJs. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, like I'm knowing this shit, bro. Yeah. <laughs> We're hip hop historians, brother. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, like, hey, don't accuse me as such. But I just say No, I'm, I I'm wear it proudly, it. fam. Like, there's not a question that you could ask me, even with the new stuff, that I'm like, I won't know at least a little bit of something about. You know what I'm saying? And I feel proud of that, bro. You know what? I feel that way, too, brother. Like, some people, like, I'm like, okay, I only know a little bit about that artist, but I do know of him. Mm-hmm. But some people will be like, they swear, yo, that's the greatest artist ever. I'll be like, okay, I know a couple songs from that guy. Yeah. You know, maybe I should look deep into it. Hip-hop is a lot of things to other people. You know what I'm saying? I recognize that, man. Whatever your vibe is, and you love it, and you know, and it brings joy to your life, more power to you. Facto. Now, I remember the first album, 2000, Welcome to the Game. Yeah. Well, Welcome to the Game, yeah. I used to, I was living in Montreal those times. I was fucking killing that album, fam. Like, I was, but like thank the you, tape, fam. you know what I'm saying? No, like, thank you. Like, you were one of the, you were one of the 2,000 people that was killing that album. <laughs> Listen, fam. We, we were like, yo, Y'all ain't hear this guy because we already were up on the, the Toronto guys. But the level that y'all were spitting at was crazy. But what I want to ask you was like, because that was the first album, right? And, right. and I remember seeing y'all in the video and stuff like that, just young and rugged. What was life right. like around that time when you guys are creating that masterpiece, fam? Bro, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> There's a time when Ke- Checkmate was the king of the city, bro. <laughs> 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 that was them times, bro. You know what I'm saying? Fresh off Northern Touch, famous mm-hmm. as hell, bro. Uh, hip hop in general and R&B was burgeoning as the most popular music form. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, cause I, I went out every night with like 18 dudes. <laughs> yeah. We went like we was out every night, and we was at the studio every night, and. Uh, we made some great music. Uh, you know, we ran into a lot of people. Uh, that, 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 that was good times, bro. Uh, we were getting real creative, you know what I'm saying, with it. And it was some good shows, too. Met Royce the 5'9 during that time. You know, still my friend to this day. What a lyricist. One of, you know, one of the top lyricists, in my opinion, out there. Uh, yeah, DJ Revolution. The list goes on, bro. It was good times. I'm telling you, bro. Uh, you know, motherfuckers are like, yo, give this guy his flowers. But I've been, I've been getting flowers. <laughs> I've been getting flowers a long time, bro. And you had some bangers on the album. Like, I remember Would You Die? That was that was my shit, right? And Days and Times with Concise. 
Ooh. Yeah. So Days and Times was recorded in Toronto. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. With Mr. Addict. Yeah, Mr. Addict from the grassroots. I remember we came out, we had a show. It was a dope show with Brass Monk, actually. Canadian Music Week or something. Shout out Brass Monk. I just seen S Rock the other night. Mm-hmm. We, we got the picture together. Uh, <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. There you go. Uh, Agile. Yeah, so we was out here and we planned it all. Uh, you know, I think they, they had sent me a beat tape. It was like three beats I wanted on them, but like two were already taken. So it ended up being days and times. And we recorded it in Toronto at some studio downtown. Okay. Uh, one of my favorite joints still. Uh, that joint really put Precise on the map, too. So, you know, big up Mr. Attic, Grassroots, all of Toronto. Would You Die was lit. That was an epic video with, <sighs> yo, bro, we had, man, that video was crazy. I don't know what the budget was, but we really put it out there. And we was independent back in those days. So all that money was paid for by us. We had explosions going on and, you know, live rounds getting fired. It was crazy. But, you know, inside note about Would You Die, bro, I just want to say this. That song was written pre-9-11 about suicide bombs. Wow. Okay. I just want to put that in perspective because a lot of people listen to that song and the lyrics are very deep. And a lot of people get a certain amount of like, this is what this song is about and what it means to me. And, you know, I'm glad it touches your life in that way. But I want you to go listen to that song now that I said the song was about suicide bombers. Yeah, it was a soldier song. It was a soldier video and that made it a little bit worse because 9-11 happened and we had the video in the can. We presented it to much music and they were like, nah, we can't do this right now. So just, just so it got bumped off. The whole Would You Die release got, yo, it, it, it really, the timing was bad, bro. I've been a victim of this before. Mm. And that was without people, just because of the military aspect of it. But that was all about without people really knowing that I was actually... And if you listen to it, it sounds like I'm showing admiration for suicide bombers, which I kind of am. Not to say I condone any of you know, that activity, obviously, but there's a certain level of commitment that I was, you know, you know, paying attention to. No, that's that's why, like, even when I hear that song to this day, I still get chills because I recognize that level of commitment. Like, would you die for the shit that you really believe in? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, this is the this is the thing. The one thing I say there is, yo, to, to kill a man, you could kill for something you believe in. That's that's cool. And that's hard. Well, would you give your own life for something you believe in? Mm. That's higher level. I call that a higher level endeavor. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, you know, this is the kind of things we was writing 25 years ago, bro. <laughs> Still you know resonates. <laughs> I mean, you know, it takes a little bit of, you know, uh, context, right? And I'm glad that you've given me this platform, IG. I'd just like to say you and your boy and, you know, your whole network, you guys are, you know, it's it's admirable. It's a level of journalism that's true. And, uh, you know, I, I really enjoy you guys. Well, listen, fam, like, I, I appreciate where the, um, your, your, the kind words. And, you know, even though the hat says, like, we love hip hop, like, it's not just a, 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 um, the name of the network. Like, I've been listening to hip hop for a long fucking time, bro. I really love hip hop, bro. You know what I, I could tell, bro? And me too, man. I'm a fan. Like, I am literally checking my release radar every Friday. I'm looking for cats. I'm waiting for, for artists to impress me and blow me away. I'm that guy, bro. If you follow me on Instagram, I routinely put on my storyline other people's releases. Nope. For the, just for the simple fact that the music is dope. I don't have to know you. You don't have to be my homie. If you're Canadian, I'm a little bit more proud of you, so I'm gonna big you up more. Mm-hmm. But bro, I don't care. I, I'm a fan of good music. If it's good, it's good. I mean, in real life, you could be a dick, even. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But if the, the song good, the song is good. Just be thankful, bro. To you know, real hip hop fans know how much garbage is out there. Yeah, like, we have got to sift through the music like a needle in a haystack to find a jam that's dope. If the jam is dope, man, tell that man it's dope. Mm. No, that's a you fact. Know? And and even with the album that you were you you were releasing, like the second album that you came out with, right? Um, Checkmate presents the game, right? Or game related. Yeah. You yeah. had you had yeah. way more features on that one, right? You had like um, well, your team, Defenders of the Faith, um, yeah. Romana O, and Royce the yeah. Five Nine. 
where you met who you yeah. met, you mentioned you met from the first album. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, Royce is on Raw. That's one of my biggest songs. Oh, probably A-W. in the States. Exactly. So in the States, you know what I'm saying? Like in Canada, obviously it's Northern Touch, but in the States, anywhere I go, it's going to be Raw. Because, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Royce also put that on, on one of his albums called Build and Destroy, right? He so did. the song got around and a lot of people, you know what I mean, have heard that one. So big up that. Uh, and Ramona I'm sorry, o, before you continue the story, even on, yeah. um, just for on Royce, he gave you a fucking ridiculous verse, bro. Like, he did not take it light, bro. Bro, there's even history behind that verse, bro. Like, he wrote that verse for Eminem, bro. And, it sounded and, like it was M- going somewhere, somewhere in the M direction, and I was like, holy shit. Nah, bro, he, he wrote that verse originally for Renegade, Jay-Z, and Eminem. Oh, like, yeah. and then, like, bro, that's that's nuts, right? Like, you know what? I hate to be this dude, bro, but if I start dropping names of who I've been next to and mentioned next to, bro, it's it's retarded, bro. <laughs> I'm steps away from greatness all the time. Anyways, if you listen to that first, that first actually has been spat be- uh, uh, spat before by Eminem on some like mixtape shit. So no, no, no. Uh, it, it, you just fucking put the light bulb in my head because I heard the unreleased version with Royce on it. And now it just clicked to me. That is the verse, bro. That's crazy. And then we were super lucky for him to be like, we was like, let's do a song. And then he had that in the bag. And then we was like, I, and then he just fixes it at the end, you know, where he adds the, as concise as a check, mate, the end of your life. So prepare for your rest day. Raw. You know what I'm saying? Lit, right? Bro, <laughs> I'm, my hip hop, like historian brain, like I have that, the, the head blown emoji right now. Like, I can't believe what you're telling me right now, fam. Cause I never really <laughs> caught the play until you just told me right now in this conversation. Cause I hear the two verses. I hear the words. Yeah. yeah. And it didn't well, click you know to what? me. You're right though. You're a hip hop historian. So you would, would have, you know, heard that unreleased version. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Royce has had a long career too and things happened with him. There's reasons why that, you know, he wasn't on that song. I know the story but, uh, behind that, yes. Yeah, and, and we were grateful benefactors of that and that's another reason why Raw is like a, you know, it's like a fabled song. <sighs> that's a, yo, that's some hip-hop jewel that you just dropped there. Like that, I don't think anybody's ever known this, fam. Hey, spam, you know what I'm saying? Like, people got to ask. But like I said, I ain't really out here interviewing hard, bro, you know? Yeah. And even with, like, the, the next album, Aviator, right? In 2019. Yeah. Where, right. the, where the hell do you find Razkaz, bro? In 2019 yeah. on top of that, fam. <laughs> yo, that's, yo, that's uh, another story, bro. Like, in short, I'm a, a homegirl of mine since, like, we was teenagers. It, she's Razkaz's baby mama. <laughs> Wow. So, so I, I, you know, we was, me and Kimo were making Aviator Game. And, you know, Razzcat is a straight legend, bro. Like, you know, since Miami Life, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Which Miami Life, you remember the beef over the Miami Life beat, which was actually Jada Kiss's beat? Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, what was the Jada Kiss one that everybody knows? We gone. Make it, mm-hmm. we gon' make it, we gon' well. That was actually, I think, Razcast recorded on the first. I Elvis heard that version too. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, Raz, Raz like a straight legend, right? So I had an opportunity, you know, to get in touch with him and send him the music, and uh, that's how that worked. It was pretty organic too. Uh, he's a he's a legend. He's a cool cat. Uh, you know, L.A. legend. That I can't say anymore, bro. Look up Razzcast if you don't know. Listen, don't tell me that that don't, none of those verses from the "We Gonna Make It" beat um, unreleased are on that, is on that track that nah. you got with Raz. That would be <laughs> nah. super crazy, fam. Nah, nah, it ain't nothing like that. But yo, man, like if you listen to Raz's verse on that Aviator game too, bro. Like, oh my gosh, this guy. Yo, he's still lit. That's another thing I want to say. Like, Raz, me, you know what I'm saying? Lyricist, you know, King Crooked. There's a lot of people, right, still rapping, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, rapping is not an athletic event. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? There's not a time limit 
on me being in the NBA and, you know, younger cats are going to come up and get bigger, stronger and faster than me. Yeah. It's a brain event. It's a mental thing. And all I've been getting since the last time you saw me is stronger and brushing up on my skills more mm-hmm. and getting better. It was just, you know, do you see all these like, you know, post 40 rappers out here and they are going hard. Like I heard a cool G rap record the other day and cool G rap sound like cool G rap back then, bro. Mm. Like she is hard. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what I want to, that's what I want to say to all generations of rappers. Listen, we still out here and it's going to be trifling my G because all I've done is brush up on my skills and be even more of a bigger fan and want to go hard. Yeah, because even like you mentioned guys like Royce Five Nine and Cool G Rap, or you didn't mention Royce Five Nine, but I am, right? Because I've been listening yeah, to his yeah. music even up to like the um, the Book of Ryan. I feel like I, it was his last album, which was stupid. You know what I'm saying? Bro, right? out of here. But the thing is, what Royce has been able to do and other um, rappers, you know, the 40 plus rappers, he, they've also been able to transition with the streaming and with some of the social media and stuff like that. How have you found that? Yeah, man, for me, it's, it's brilliant, bro. I was in retirement for like six years, bro. Wow. I just came back in 2019 with Hustle Gang. You know yeah. what I'm saying? There is a big gap between yeah. your releases. Yeah, man, I was long retired, bro. People would see me all the time. Check me, what you doing? You know, they'd ask me, you know, well, what are you? I, I used to be a rapper. You, you know, I'd be like that. You know what I'm saying? That was like six years of that, bro. You know, I'm a guy around here, so people recognize, and it's all nostalgia and everything was good. But music changed in that time, bro. You know, after the whole trap domination, you know, and with the rise of people like Griselda, you know what I'm saying? They're very instrumental in bringing back this lyricism. Mm -hmm. And my boy, who's a producer, Vago, he made Hustle Game. We was at a party. We hadn't seen each other in years. And he was like, listen, the climate of music has changed, bro, of hip hop. What you do and what I do is back. It's kind of like the cycle has come back our way. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. let's do a record. He was very instrumental. I wasn't even interested, bro. Like, you know what? I'm a fan of the music. I love trap music and I love all that. But I was like, our time is over and this is what the wave is. And it's dope, right? Mm-hmm. Well, people jumped on me like, yo, the wave is back. Do what you do. I'm like, what I do, I do. They're like, yeah, you ain't got to, you know, Make up shit or try to be nobody else but yourself. Yeah. Boom. Hustle game. You know what I'm saying? The response to hustle game is organic. I'm that guy, bro. Like, I'm I'm not forcing my career on anybody. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm just here to make the best music I can. Whatever comes with it, whether it be, you know, like accolades or shows or anything. Cool. I'm going to do it. But I'm not forcing my music upon anybody. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's not going to be any like promo campaigns or none of that shit, bro. I ain't playing that. Nah, fam. I, I fuck with it, bro. And we, we had some good conversation backstage um, like or in that smoking section over there. Right. We were, you know, we had a little bit of a we started talking about like the state of Vancouver right now. Right. Um, yeah. Like, can we go back into it a little bit more? Because you say now you get to you work with the with the shelter system and stuff like that. Right. Yeah, it's not, I'm not, I work down on Hastings, bro. Yeah. (laughs) You know what? I'm not part of any uh, official system. Let me just say I work down there, but the the community is a small community. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Everybody is is part of the mix. Uh, We all have social concerns. They are actual official, you know, workers down there. It's not what I do, bro. Mm -hmm. And even with over there, like, for the people, because we're over here in Toronto, a lot of people don't know that, like, Hastings, I, I've been down there, I've, I've walked down and walked past Hastings, and, like, that block is just full of, like, you know, a lot of different, like, drug addicts, people with mental health issues. There's um, free needle clinics and all types of stuff over there, right? Why yeah. does Vancouver have such a bad drug problem, fam? Why do you think? Yo, my G, that is the question that everybody in Vancouver has to answer. Uh, I've been thinking about that for a long time. I'm going to try to be concise about it, pardon the pun, but yeah, yeah. ever since I got to Vancouver, this has been a drug city. It's a port town. Uh, Vancouver was known for the best heroin in the world when heroin was the jam of all jams. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's always had a history of that. 
history and the uh, Hastings and the downtown east side has always been that zone. You know what I'm saying? Where pretty much, you know, law enforcement turns a blind eye to, you know, you know, just like drug use in public. You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Uh, Everything was going good until, you know, the fentanyl epidemic. And now we're like plus or minus 250 to 300 deaths a month. Wow. In Vancouver from ODs. Way, way supersedes COVID by far, by far. There's ambulances on Hastings scraping people up off the ground, sometimes twice a day, only for them to succumb again the next time. It's nuts. Uh, our ambulance system is, uh, they have PTSD. They're tired of, you know, you know, just helping drug addicts get up. You know what I mean? Um they had a Narcan. This is what revives people. A lot of people in Vancouver carry it with them to revive people on the street. But now, you know, they're starting to cut the drug with Benzowitz, which resists Narcan. Uh, it goes on and on. My end result, bro, is I'm going to say the only reason this goes on is they care more about money in Vancouver than human life. It's mm. simple as that. There's a lot that goes into that statement and the reasons why. But it is a simple, simple money or human life. And they've made a decision that it's okay for 200 to 300 people to die every month in Vancouver from drug overdoses, a first world country. Wow. Okay. That's all. Listen, my G, I got to cut it short, man. My wits is going mad over here, bro. I, <laughs> okay. I got to bounce. Maybe we can do it again. No, fam. Um, we we, we got we got a lot of of information in this in this conversation here. I I did have a few more questions, but I feel that we covered a lot of ground here, and and I really do appreciate like having this time to 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 get to pick your brain. You know what I'm saying? Because this it doesn't happen a lot. You know what I mean? Yo, my G, just thank you for giving me that opportunity. I don't really get to speak candidly a lot, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I discussed the reasons why. Mm-hmm. It was really nice to meet you, and I support you and your peoples and what you're doing. Um, Holl at me again, man. Maybe we talk next time or something, you know what I'm saying? I'm sorry I had to cut it short, but... Uh, no, we'll yeah, get a just part know two that I'm, uh, Yeah, just know I'm watching and supporting you, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, yo, I'm around for anything. You got my digits. Okay. Yeah. Make sure to follow Checkmate on all social media platforms. Make sure um, Checkmate the Hustler on Instagram and make sure to tap into all his music, Spotify and all streaming platforms. Thank you for this, brother. Respect, my brother. Thank you. Boom. All right. Done. No. Yeah. Peace, my G. Peace. (laughs)